Hello everyone. Good morning. Kalimera. How is everyone? Today this reading is for the 29th of March or whenever you view this reading. This is the divine spread that I'm doing every day in these challenging times. Um, hope that you enjoyed yesterday's uh, cards, yesterday's spread. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this divine spread, this is a major arcana card that I'm taking as the divine message. So the karma dharma, what are we going on? On what what is happening with the collective? What is happening for some other people? on a personal level and we do have the card of Gemini and the lovers so this could be a major decision that you're needing to make today or around the time that you watch this video some of you could have a choice between two options two people two um, two choices to do with anything because this is a general reading it's love, general, work, family, everything all together. So some of you could be dealing with a person who is a Gemini and others of you are dealing with matters of love as this is a divine union. Again, we've got Archangel Michael here blessing this union. This doesn't have to be a romantic union. It could be a soulmate connection soulmates could be anyone in our life people that come uh, for a certain amount of time they come they um, take part in the story they play their role in our lives and then they move on so could be anything let's take let's take the divine spread and what I notice here is that Archangel Michael is holding a bow and arrow and um, it's not something that I see all the time. So the bow and arrow does speak of Sagittarian energy as well. We know that Sag is the sign opposite to Gemini. Okay, and Sagittarius is Jupiter ruled. And we know that Jupiter is coming very, very close to... Pluto in the next six, seven days, it will be exact. So there is something transforming, something major. We know that Jupiter blows up everything that it touches on and Pluto can mean the masses. It can mean, of course, anything to do with transformation, anything that is changing on a very deep level. But we can also think of Jupiter as being the abundance and being spirit. It's divine source in our lives. So this could be divine source touching the masses and bringing in something very good and very healing through, you know, for those of us that are more spiritual, that are more connected to spirit, um, they could be the ones that are receiving the message first. As we know, you know, our higher self um, communicates on another level. So I would advise that we all take time to meditate, just be quiet and see what messages we receive. Okay, and this could be the silver lining, the silver lining with Jupiter touching uh, Pluto. It can, of course, be expansion on um, fatalities on a collective scale but I think that will be the peak um, and I do believe that the light wins over the darkness so let's take the cards in the foundation we have the knight of cups and the knight of cups could be an offer this is an offer that is brought forth usually the knight of cups is not the knight that comes in very decisive Sometimes he gets cold feet. So there is an offer that is being brought forth and we know that he's holding that Ace of Cups. Now this could be a Scorpio, Cancer or Pisces. Doesn't have to be. 
So this reading stems from the Knight of Cups, so it's concerning some sort of an offer. I suppose it could be some sort of an apology, as we know that um, the Knight of Cups does have a decision to make his very fluctuating, his emotions fluctuate, and therefore um, we know that if someone has done you wrong, where love is concerned or where any relationship is concerned, they're seriously thinking of coming forth. Now, I'm not reading reversals in these readings. I'm just going by what I feel. So let's see what is in the hidden position. What is hidden from us that we cannot see? And we have the Empress, which is another beautiful card. The Empress we know is very Venusian. She's very expansive. She's a three. Venus is actually transiting... Um, Taurus, its uh, rulership, it is at the late degrees. So for those of you that are uh, Taurus, uh, Sun Taurus rising mainly, this is really good. If you're at the last 10 days, let's say, of the sign, um, then Venus should be blessing your lives. Overall, though, not looking at the astrology, we know that the Empress could be a motherly figure. There is a seed that is planted in her belly, which she is being patient for it to manifest. So I do feel that this could also be support from your mothers. We know that this is the Mother Earth, and um, the Mother Earth is blooming at this time. Let's uh, just see when we can go out and enjoy that. Nevertheless, the Empress, again, can be very sensual, very sexual, very attractive. She, she is a magnet, right? So she draws in anything that is of material wealth, anything that is, again, sensual. And I'm going to go back to Taurus again, even though she rules um, Taurus and Libra. We know that Libra is partnerships, relationships with others. It's all about balance. Taurus is all about sensual, those five senses. So I do feel that with the Empress, this is a blessing, a blessing in disguise. And I did upload on my social media just recently that Venus was in a beautiful aspect with Jupiter. And um, actually, that's already passed. I want you to, if nothing has happened in your life, nothing um, benevolent and with a feeling of lucky and anything to do around our values and what we love, even projects, anything that Venus speaks of. If that hasn't happened for you in the past couple of days, remember this time and let's see in the near future what is going to show up as Venus has already touched on Pluto as well in a very positive way. So something is changing. We know that Pluto can speak of rebirth as well. So let's see what is going to be reborn. Something around our values, something around um, things that are important to us. And we can also say that uh, Venus could be a person in our lives, so more feminine on the feminine side. All right, let's see what is happening here in the recent past position. And we have the Knight of Swords, and we know that the Knight of Swords is Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. Something um, difficult has gone on in the recent past. We know that he's holding that Ace of Swords. He's actually showing it to us. He is showing his strength, his intellectual strength. And um, he is someone who is very decisive. This is quick action after messages have come through. Now, because I'm not reading reversals, maybe in the recent past, someone was ready to bring you a message, but they were holding back. Could be um, connected to this Knight of Cups. You could be dealing with someone that is taking on the energy, that has taken on the energy in the recent past of the Knight of Swords. We know that the Knight of Swords can be quite uh, cutting where the words are concerned. And this could have even been um, a rival 
or rivalry in love. Okay, Knight of Swords comes in very swiftly and brings you clarity or will be bringing you clarity. Let's look at the now position. And we have the lovers again. So, wow, the cards do speak. The lovers twice. Gemini is very strong here. We know that Gemini is the house of communication. It's the house of siblings, uh, neighbors, anything to do with technology, anything to do with movement. And we know that we're all on lockdown right now. And we do have, again, Archangel Michael. Again, in the lover's card, he's here. He's obviously here and he is guiding us. Now, Gemini can also um, indicate, as Venus will be moving into Gemini very soon, and Venus will be retrograding there. So I do feel that it's got to do with communication, where relationships are concerned of all sorts. We know that Gemini can also, because it's ruled by Mercury, it can talk about business, right? So, um, and also the students. So I feel that once Venus moves into Gemini and Venus will be retrograding there, things will be coming up for uh, redirecting, refixing, and so on, or even re-talking about. Let's, you know, let's go back to that. Whatever was going on for you, in the recent past because I could see this was obviously I would I feel would be two people on a different um, two people with differences in opinion and it may have been a bit of uh, difficult energy as we know that the Knight of Swords can come really swiftly to you know th speaks before he thinks um, even though he is someone who's very intellectual and, and bright, let's say, if he were to be in the reverse, it's all about maybe even holding on to news, holding on to information um, instead of bringing it forth. So for those of you that are needing the clarity, I would say, if not now, um, when Venus is retrograding in the sign of Gemini, and, um, of course, Mercury will be there at some point, but Mercury is still trying to finish the cycle in uh, Pisces. That will be very interesting. Those times will be very interesting, and we're looking towards um, closer to May. So let's see what is a, your goal, what you're trying to achieve, what is on your mind. And we have the Ace of Swords. There it is. We all need the clarity. For those of you that have been... Um, in a relationship that hasn't been working out for you. Okay, there's been no love. The decision was very hard. You've been using your head over your heart. What do you do? You're trying to calculate things in relation to this soulmate connection. A lot of you are hoping for the clarity. Others of you may be leaving a relationship in the past. You're hoping to sever ties and have a successful new beginning elsewhere. We do have the lovers twice, so this could also be a reflection of what you're feeling and the person that you're interested in, what they're facing as well. Because I do see when I have double cards that it is a similar reflection of the energies that you're both going through. Let's take the action and advice. We do have a fair bit of air here. So as I said, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. And we have the Magician, really interesting, right? Just as I was talking about Mercury, this is the card of Mercury. Sometimes we could even mention Virgo as the Magician, being Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So some of you could be dealing with someone that is very mercurial, very logical thinking. Now, as I said, I'm not reading reversals, so... Some of you are dealing with someone that is the magician in your life. For others of you, this could be your energy and that you're the magician and you can manifest. We've got two cards, two strong cards of manifestation. We know that the magician is a number one, so it's an ace up our sleeves. So the advice is that as above, so below. Whatever is going on up there in the planetary movements is reflecting down here in our lives. So the magician 
even if he was to be in the reverse, I usually see reversals as one step back. We haven't gone to the magician yet. So what's the card before that? It's the card of Aries and it's um, the full card. So we're ready as with the sun being and transiting through the sign of Aries, right, which it loves to be there. Um, we're all on the precipice of new beginnings. Some of us have taken that next step. Others of us are still in the fool's um, energy. So I do see this as very positive. For those of you that are making a decision to close the door on the past where a difficult love relationship is concerned, as I said, you may have been dealing with someone that was um, very abusive, then um, you may also be dealing with someone that was quite the trickster. Okay, so you see the truth now. You receive the messages. We know that Mercury is the messenger of the gods. So the advice is that you will be seeing um, the reflection of the stars down here. As I said, if you take time out, meditate, be still for a while, look out for those messages because they're coming in. As I said, Mercury is the messenger. Now, this could be in the form of an email, a text, an SMS, whatever it is. It could even be a, a signs and synchronicities, I'm going to say. So let's take the outcome. And we've got the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups could mean a card of illusions, as this is Piscean energy for me. It's Neptunian. Neptune um, is the... Um, planet which rules Pisces and Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces and what is interesting to see uh, because we know that Neptune can be illusions Neptune is the god of the seas Poseidon right and it's again interesting that uh, today on my usual messages that I I take one card um, from the um, the deck of the gods, um, which is the mythic oracle. I, I take one card on Instagram every day. Um, so the message today was actually was Poseidon. And we know that Poseidon and Neptune can be really magical, but it can also be, the energies of that could also be really harsh. Um, and We've got Mercury, which is coming up, the planet Mercury, which is coming up to Neptune. Interestingly enough, also Neptune uh, rules illnesses. Uh, Mercury, Mercury, which rules Gemini. Gemini is the lungs. So this could be clarity very soon in things that were up in the air. Things were very illusionary, very dim, uh, we couldn't see the forest for the trees. So I feel as though this is, a, this is a card that's giving us choices, but it's also going to bring us clarity. As soon as these two come together, that's going to be in a few days. So a week at the most. Let's look at the divine position now. What is the divine message from spirit? This is the divine position in this spread. Archangel Michael, please guide us. And we've got the chariot. And the chariot is the divine. It's a number seven. It is Cancerian um, energy. This is where the north node of the moon is. It's actually transiting through um, the house of Cancer. And all those difficult energies are happening in the sign of Capricorn. Very soon, the axis Capricorn Cancer with those nodes that are very fated, very karmic, will be entering the signs of Gemini and Sagittarius, as I mentioned before. Now, the chariot says that we are overcoming obstacles. Others of us may be moving home. Others of us could be moving towards family. I would say this is moving towards family as the north node in the sign of Cancer is all about focusing on family, our security, our one-on-one -on -one um, people, the people that we that feel like family, even if it's not family, it could be friends. Um, so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
I'm going to take one more card on this Seven of Cups. What else is the outcome here, dear spirit? What else do we need to know about this Seven of Cups, which is giving us choices, but some of us may have so many choices that we're confused. What else do we need to know? And we have the Six of Pentacles, and this is beautiful. This is reciprocity. This is also anything to do with monetary, you know, on a daily basis. Six, the house, um, the sixth house is the house of Virgo, even though I do see this as the card of Libra. Um, yes, Virgo is also uh, mercurial, but the Six of Pentacles, which is Earth, so yes, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, Six of Pentacles says that there will be equilibrium, that there will be generosity between us and them, whoever they are. This is also coming into balance. But this could also mean legalities for me as well. And speaking of Libra, of course, which is the scales, Libra is also about justice. So we know that the pentacles are all about earth and something that is real and physical and tangible. So do not fret here with the Seven of Cups that um, Six of Pentacles speaks of equality and having the support, if not the monetary, having the support of others. So let's take another card. And we have the Nine of Cups, people. Nine of Cups is that wish fulfillment and we're going to be smiling again and I'm I really love this card so seven and nine that's 16 16 is the number of the tower and uh, we know that cups are all about our emotions and we are one step before the uh, ten of cups here so I'm going to take it as whatever choices we are being given or that we're being shown um, they do have a strong, uh, a grounded and a reality to them and it's going to be some sort of a wish fulfillment. I would say whatever this clarity is as well, whatever this communication is going to be, we will be able to overcome our obstacles. As I said, for those of you that are needing to move home as you are leaving behind a trickster, then you may be moving to another person in your life. We do have two nights here. Okay, two nights. We've got a water sign and an air sign. So I'm not going to be speaking of specific signs unless they are the major arcana. So let's take a message now from Spirit. Let's see what Spirit has for us today. What do we need to know, please, Spirit? What do we need to know? And I will be taking two of my handwritten message cards at these two nights as I feel as though for those of you that are looking at love you may be choosing between two or dealing with two people nevertheless let's take a message for today and we have caregiver okay let's read the card we are with you and spirit has its own way of recognizing the care and love you provide to others, especially at the end of their lives, just as you received care and love at the start of your life. And what this says to me is that some of you may need to be there for your mum, okay, as the empress is the mother. They do say, we've got a saying in Greek which says, one mother can look after a hundred children, but a hundred children can't look after one mother. So if it is possible even that call, that phone call to your elderly parents at this time is a very important um, sense of giving, even those few words from uh, you to your parents in whichever way you can help. Okay, so caregivers often focus all their attention on their loved ones and often neglect their own concerns and well-being in the process. So this also speaks to me of the people in the medical fields right now and um, we know that the House of Virgo deals with um, health 
and, you know, doctors, nurses and so on, all the people who are in the health um, community. Let's give our thanks to all of them in whichever way we can as we know that the Empress, again, I'm going to say the Empress, is very expansive. She is that nurturing, loving energy. So if this is someone that is in your life, don't forget to show your support in whichever way possible. Now, I'm going to take my handwritten cards and I will be taking two cards, one on this Knight of Swords and one on the Knight of Cups as I feel that for some of you this could be two different people. For others of you, if this is the same person, you will have two messages from them. But I feel it mainly in one card fill out here on the Knight of Cups. I do feel that for a lot of you this could be two different people. Let's look at that Knight of Swords. And he says, if you won't or can't accept my life and my ways, then we're over. I can have any woman or man with a blink of an eye. That's the message coming from this Knight of Swords and there's a lot of ego in that uh, in those words as well. Now the Knight of Cups says, my heart still bleeds for you. I am not living, just breathing. So it looks as though this Knight of Cups obviously was hoping to give you their heart, but for some reason maybe he was knocked back for whatever reason. And we know that this is not gender specific, so it doesn't matter if you are a feminine out there, we've got the Knight of Cups, which his heart is still ble bleeding. So this may have been someone that's offer, that their offer was knocked back at some point for whatever reason. Okay, everyone, I think I will leave it at that. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for all that you do for my channel. I am sending you many blessings, much love, and I will be seeing you and talking to you tomorrow. Stay well until then. Bye-bye.